So I've been thinking a lot about Jenna Osmond's dropping leaflets and her comments that she wants to hear the white noise for what it is. Yes. And when you posted um, Jat Blanc's What the President Will Say and Do this morning, I was listening to it and I really felt very comforted by that poem because it felt like it was expressing some kind of truth. And I know that's a big word, but I guess I'm, I'm, my question is, are people like Osman and Jat Blanc interested in truth or are they just interested in or are they just interested in another version of reality yes great question Alice do you want to uh, stay on the line uh, for a little bit by the way we have a we have a, a book of poems for you for calling in uh, yes do, thank do you, you. want to choose <laughs> okay so here are the choices there's Jason what are you laughing at the choice thing. <laughs> yeah, the choice. Oh, sorry. That, Lily didn't like it when I did. But these are like... Anyway, J Jason's Heat Wake uh, and also uh, Julia Block's really great Valley Fever. Both are fa fantastic. And you want to just uh, tell Anna afterwards uh, which uh, book you want and then uh, she'll get your address in New York, I hope. That sounds great. Okay, Thank you. Okay, great. Stay on the line. We'll, we'll respond to this issue. Uh, so, Eric... Davey and Erica, would you respond to this? So um, one of the questions here is, I think she's right, Alice, is in thinking that Jenna is not trying to solve the political problem. She's just trying to create consciousness. Now that's a half step, and I think Gabe and Max both implied, Ga Max in particular implied that half steps are good, consciousness is good, but there are times when efficacy, actual efficacy, has to take us beyond poetry or maybe a poetry of answers. This is not a course on poetry of answers. So that's a problem in itself. So, Davey, thoughts on Alice's dilemma? Well, I mean, this isn't a course on poetry of answers, but it is a course on poetry of procedure. And I think that uh, the idea of truth is something that happens outside of time, that you get like, this is a, this is a true fact, this is, this is true information, it's happening in a moment, it's sort of atemporal, and Osmond's project, Joan Retallick's project, Cage's project are militantly procedural. Are we need to be doing something. We need to find a way to engage with this language, to defamiliarize this language, to figure out how to put our hand through mm -hmm. all of, you know, mm -hmm. all of all of this political rhetoric, to mm -hmm. be able to pull it apart, to be able to bring it back to its original materiality. I think that that's what I hear in Osmond talking about the white noise of political rhetoric is that it's language that stops being material. It stops feeling like words. So Robert Frost, in a poem called For Once Then Something, which is a sonnet in Mod Po Plus, um, thought that truth was actually there to be seen once in a while at the bottom of the well, a little piece of white quartz. He was, he's not really sure what it is. But he really believes in the truth. There is a thing at the bottom of the well, and I just need to get into a position to see it based on the sun shining down and based on the fact that I'm trying to look past my narcissistic view of myself. And the water clears for a moment, and I see the quartz. Jenna is, I don't know if militantly is the right word, but adamantly sure. against that truthiness mm -hmm. and more interested in the truth of the white noise, the fact of the fact of white noise as a state of language and consciousness becomes a counter-truth. It's procedural. The how of what we say is as important as the courts at the bottom of the well. Yeah? Yeah, and I think that the reason that that's the case is that if I'm going to read a poem right now, it's to help me get through five minutes. Like, let alone get through the day. Like, I want a poem to take up the space between my grief and my grief. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> The, tr the, the truth in a poem is not going to do that. And the procedure of dropping leaflets is a way to just like take up a small amount of time. And there's a radicalism in taking up a small amount of time and more time and more time in yes. the pursuit of having a yes. relationship with language that's other than the relationship that's being aggressively and constantly given to me. And Davey, do you know what else is not going to give you that solace? Someone coming along, whether it's Frost with his answer or a teacher who stands up and lectures, uh, that kind of, I have the truth and you should know it. You take a course, there's a famous course here taught by quite an amazing scholar of World War II and the Holocaust, Tom Childers. And it's a course in which he lectures 
And if you are delivered unto that truth, you're supposed to walk out feeling like you can make sure that it doesn't happen again. And I guess Mod Post stands for, with all due respect to Tom Childers, an opposite view, which is you have to all do the, you have to do the procedure. You can't just let Jenna do it. You have to do the procedure of cutting through the white noise so that consciousness is higher rather than lower at any moment. And that is going to be a solace that you've gotten your shit together. Yeah, because it's obviously, you know, we're, sit we're sitting in a moment where it's obviously the case that we can, like, identify a horrible thing until, you know, like, infinitely. And, you know, millions of people being like, this is fucking horrible. Like, this is awful. Yeah. That's clearly that's not the response. So, like, is there a w way to have a procedural relationship with language that's just different? Because, like, this is finally a division yeah. of rhetoric. This is a division yeah. of what language is available to whom. Yeah. I think this is, I mean, like, yeah. all we can do right now that, like, poetry feels like the locus of this, of like, what is the language that everyone has? Like, this is it. Well said. Every parent struggles with how to pep talk the child and saying, you get through dark times. You have a long life. You know, my 401k is going to shit, but you can li you're going to live another 50 years. Um, and uh, I, this is a parental prerogative now we're about to get, but, you know, texting with my daughter, who's frightened, a frightened person, uh, 22 years old, living on her own in New York. Uh, when, it, it, she didn't thank me last night by text for telling her what a bunch of truths to think so that she can fend off darkness. She said, thank you for raising me to think big, th big thoughts and impose intolerance. What she's saying to me there is, um, you, you know, the, the, your, mo your mode of acceptance or listening to other people is what I learned, not some information that you gave me as a parent. And I think, um, I don't, I'm tired of the truth that gets delivered to us, because it doesn't seem to be getting us anywhere. So. If Mod Poe is about something, maybe it's about consciousness of the sort that Jenna is reminding us we need to do every time it's necessary to find the, find the words, which was the name of the program. And I apologize for that, but kids get to me. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm getting a hug from Davey. Oh. oh, shit. Okay. Eric, I'm not going to ask you to follow that directly. I'm going to ask <laughs> Erica to follow it directly. And that, sorry, look, Erica's giving me a face. I told Erica before we started, I need my EK fix. So Erica's going to come on the 21st and we're going to hang out. Eric, will you say something about this and then Eric briefly and we'll go back to Alice and we'll see where we are at this point. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know that I have anything to say. What did Cage say? I have nothing to say and I'm saying it. All right. You know what I'm going to do, Eric, to get you off the hook slightly? I'm going to I'm going to play Yacht Blanc, and then you can respond to that. Okay, Erica? Erica, I'm going to I'm going to play Yacht Blanc, and then if you feel like you have something to say after that, you can. And Eric, and then we'll go back to Alice. And this is Yacht Blanc. He's in this room. Years ago, he came, and he decided to do his Yacht Blancy thing by taking apart a phrase, um, and the phrase is, what the president will say and do. <laughs> what the president will say and do. And this is as prophetic a piece as, as possible. Here it is. Chris, we didn't test out the audio, but you're, you're the man, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you won't understand the introduction, so don't worry. No, nope, I'm not getting it. Yep. Hang in, everybody. <laughs> what the president will say and what do. The You're <laughs> laughing. Stop. <laughs> no, I just did this. I don't know. Say say is, Everything's going wrong. What the president will say and do. Yeah. What the president will say and do. We got it. All right. All right. Here we go. This is Yacht Blanc, what the president will say and do. You won't hear the introduction. It's hard to understand. Kel Arts in Los Angeles, and uh, I met this uh, writer, Madeline Gins. And He's I saying he like met Madeline Gins. Short meditation of, on the title of one it's of her books. It's a short meditation on the title of one of her books. What the president will say and do. What the president will say and do. 
what the president will say and do what the president will say and do what the president will say and do what the president will say and 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 what the president will say Eric. When he does this, he stands before you as the press secretary of the President of the United States. It is a spectacular performance. And he gradually becomes unable to spread the BS anymore. He and gags on the words. He gags on the words until the human function of language has stopped. So right now, we are in a moment of grief, um, and we're going to go through various stages of mourning. But there's something on the other side of that, and experimental poetry definitely has a role to play about that. I'm just going to go back to one moment when I think of Allen Ginsberg saying, America, I am going to put my queer shoulder to the wheel. Experimental poetry gives us a wheel to move because the rules in a government, in a society which is imposing limits and imposing orders and structures which are to the detriment of many of its citizens, maybe all of its citizens, the ability of artists to take the acceptable and to derange it and to change it and to expose the mechanisms which underlie this world in which we live is very, very important. That may not be where we are today. What we may need may not be, I mean today, right now, here in Philadelphia, we may emotionally need a line like, it is not to be believed, because that resonates for us. But Thank you, Eric the work in front of us will give us the opportunity to use these techniques in new ways to expose and to move, hopefully, to begin a process of, of moving forward. Um, Alice, are you still there? I am. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Okay. Uh, did you want to have a final word on this topic before you hang up? Oh, look, just, you've all said so much and so beautifully, so thank you. And, yeah, I really love what we were saying at the start about poetry just giving us a space between grief and grief. I think that's important today and for the next little while, and I think, yeah, just getting to the next stage, to the other side. Thank you, Alice, and thank you for your work with the podcast, and thanks in advance for coming to visit us on November 21st. For the Can't final. wait. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, Gabe wants to say something, and then we'll move to a new phone call or a comment. And I would like, uh, Carlos, you have the mic. So I would like you to either say something or take a look at your colleagues behind you and see if anybody wants to ask a question or make a comment. Gabe. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a tone change from um, from your comment, Eric. But I, I sort of, this is just on my mind, like about Yap and about the last question, like, the, the question that Alice asked was, is Yacht Blanc and uh, are Jenna Osmond and Yacht Blanc interested Looking for in the truth. truth, right? Yeah. I think Yacht Blanc is interested in aesthetics, and I sort of could use some aesthetics right now, which, like, so the reason I guess I'm laughing is that, like, and maybe the reason me and Emily were laughing is Emily and I are both people who have lived with a lot of grief in our lives, and at a certain point, I think when you experience that, you say to yourself that, 
Uh, it, it can actually be quite funny sometimes. <laughs> and so, and, and, and the world is arranged in a very strange and funny way sometimes. And I think Yacht Blog is one of those people who actually does recognize that. And the thing about that piece is that I actually find it very uh, unself serious. I find it really yeah. funny. Yeah. And, um, can, I, and, can I stop you mm -hmm. there? Because yeah, you've said do. a lot already. Um, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not chastising you. I'm just no, saying I'm one, I, of, those, I have I'm one a, of those people. I have, <laughs> I have a thought. No, I think that Yacht Blanc, and I think he's on the Goldsmith side, Mm -hmm. of uh, Dada hijinks. Yeah. But I think that when he, in particular, does a poem like this, and it's rare, and I think that Kenny, when he does a poem such as Traffic, uh -huh. right, or when he, with spectacular um, miscalculation, wanted to do something with the Mike Brown autopsy, mm -hmm. ventures from the Dada hijinks into mm -hmm. a world of political discourse. Yes. And what we admire in next week of Goldsmith's work is uh, not the New York sucks, uh, my, uh, Robert Moses should be hung by his fingernails <laughs> if, because of traffic, because yeah. the traffic sucks in New York. And so it's kind of a political comment on city planning traffic is and it's been written about that way but actually he just thinks it's hilarious to listen to these voices on the radio <laughs> yeah right and i think that soliloquy is probably on the hijinks side mm -hmm. because there's very little content to this guy's week of conversation um the divide between the serious cagey and mcclovian uh we have a lot of work to do side the jenna osmond side mm -hmm. and the neo-dadaism is best evidenced in an hour-long discussion that Osmond and Goldsmith had in this room in, my, mm. in front of my class, English 88, mm -hmm. about 10 years ago. It's recorded in full, and it's really worth exploring. It's out there somewhere. I'll make sure I put a link to it. And you get to see that serious ethical Ritalikian side arguing with the Goldsmith side, and it's really illuminating on the point that you made. <laughs>